What's up guys, Rogue9 here. I've spent some time digging into the changes coming to Rainbow Six Siege with Operation Void Edge and Year 5 Season 1, and in this video I want to discuss all of the most impactful operator balancing changes. Which operators are changing, will they be nerfed or buffed, and what impact will these updates have on gameplay? Let's go and find out. The first little update we will be getting is on the recruits. Ubisoft have stated many times in the past that the only reason the recruits were added into the game in the first place, and the only reason they are still there, is to cater for very new players, just in case they get into a situation where all of the operators they owned were already picked by teammates. Other than this small minority of cases, the recruit was never supposed to be picked because you and your entire team miss out on bringing the powerful main gadgets you could have with a unique operator instead. Nowadays, even the base version of the game comes with all launch operators unlocked, so the reason for adding the recruits into the game in the first place is no longer valid, and it has now been close to a year since the recruit was removed from ranked. The fact is that the recruits don't have a purpose in a hero shooter anymore, and as iconic as they may have become, Ubisoft regards them as a waste of resources in a game where data limits have become a severe bottleneck. My prediction at this stage is that we will see a gradual phasing out of this character, and this rework is probably only the first step towards the final goal of removing recruits from the game entirely. But so much for the little history lesson and future speculation. Now let's discuss the way the recruits will work after the next season's patch goes live. Going forward, you will no longer be able to pick recruits based on CTU. All you will have to choose from is a selection of primary and secondary weapons, including the Super Shorty, and then a selection of primary and secondary gadgets. All weapons will have a fixed setup that cannot be changed, but this is definitely an improvement over the old recruits where you were forced to run your weapons without any attachments. The gadget selections have become quite versatile, and you will now get the full loadout quantities rather than the reduced number of items from the past, plus the Defender Recruit can now also carry two reinforcements rather than just one. In my tests, all of the recruits were two speed and two armor, no matter which weapons or gadgets I chose, and it seems like all of the voice lines are now those of the former FBI SWAT recruit. My guess is that the models for the heavy and light armor, as well as the voices for the other CTUs, are being retired to free up space in the game, but again, I have no confirmation on that. My conclusion on the effectiveness of these new versions of the recruits is that they will be more powerful going forward, and so this is an overall buff. No more blank weapons, and full gadgets and reinforcement loadouts will definitely make the recruit a stronger character going forward, although arguably the actual operators will still be preferable due to their unique abilities. What are your thoughts on the new recruits, and would you mind seeing them phased out overall? Leave a vote in the poll on screen now. Now let's look at the changes that will affect individual operators, and why don't we start off with the somewhat meatier changes to Legion and Twitch. Legion is getting nerfed just a touch, hopefully enough to make him less annoying, but also not enough to stop him from being effective and fun to play. Legion being able to see all of his mines all over the map all of the time was never meant to be a gameplay mechanic. The only reason he had those icons in the first place was to help players pick the mines back up since they were so hard to see. Now with the new patch, Legion will still get those icons but only as long as he has line of sight of those mines and only if he is relatively close. As soon as you move more than 8 meters away, the icon starts to fade and will eventually disappear completely. Beyond this, Goo Mines will no longer do initial damage, but instead, the later damage per tick is increased from 4 to 6 points. This makes Mines far less punishing when you first step into them, especially if you're already on very low health, but at the same time increases the urgency for the stricken attacker just a tiny bit by making the Mines more punishing over time. The final change is that Goo Mines will no longer affect attackers that are down but not out. I'm not sure where this change came from, or what it is really meant to achieve, and in a way this feels like more of a nerf to Frost, because now the welcome mat goo combo will no longer finish off an opponent. 
I guess dying to a goo when you're in a state where you cannot pull the stinger out is kind of frustrating, but out of all of the things that can be frustrating in Siege, I think this was pretty far down the list for most players. But there you go, that's what is going to be happening with Legion in the near future, and so over once again to you. Do you think these nerfs will add up to achieve the goal of making Legion less frustrating for attackers, but still be fun enough to play on defense? Leave your votes in the poll on screen now. Next up is Twitch and uh, a buff or nerf? Let's call it a change to her Shock Drone gadget. Currently on the live build, the Shock Drones come with a capacity of 5 shots each that are instantly available but will be gone forever once fired. After the patch, the max capacity per drone will only be 3 shots, but they do recharge at a rate of 1 every 30 seconds, so in theory, with a 45 second prep phase and 3 minute round time, if you are a busy little bee, you could fire off a total of 10 shots per drone throughout the entire round. This is twice the amount you get to shoot now, but also very difficult to achieve because you would need to be on your drone so much without getting them caught and also finding viable targets all the time. Something that will help with pumping out those shots though is that after the patch you can fire off the shots at double the rate compared to now, one every second, instead of one every two seconds. This of course could make the drones pretty annoying if they're used on players instead of the gadgets, and so there is also a significant nerf to the damage the darts will do from 10 points right now to a measly 1 point in future. And the drone nerf slash buff is not the only change coming to Twitch. According to the patch notes, her dearly beloved and much revered F2 assault rifle is getting a recoil increase to the first 6 shots of each burst. But as you can see in the side by side comparison here, there's more to the change than that. Both of these tests were run without any attachments, and yes, the vertical recoil is increasing for those first few shots, but at the same time the recoil diamond, which gives us the randomized recoil effect in Siege, is apparently becoming a bit smaller because rather than ending up with a final pattern that shows a continuous stream of bullets, with the new recoil we can still see the individual groups of bullets for each shot. Also, you will notice that the current recoil is relatively straight and the future recoil has a definite bias to the right. It's definitely a nerf overall, but once you slap on the vertical grip and muzzle brake, things will improve a bit more. The F2 is definitely more challenging to control than most attacker guns, especially after receiving multiple recoil nerfs across several seasons now, but it's still nowhere near as bad as some weapons can be. <coughs> SMG12. What are your thoughts on the gadget change and the further F2 nerf? You know what to do, poll, screen, now. And finally, let me quickly take you through the secondary gadget updates for a handful of operators. Dockerby is losing grenades and gaining stuns, Maverick is the opposite, he loses the stuns and gains grenades, Merc and Ying both lose their claymores and pick up frags instead. Three new attackers with frags and one less gives us a net change of two, and while that might ring alarm bells for many players worrying about having to play defense against such a lineup, I think it's also worth considering that we now have two dedicated anti-projectile operators, so hopefully Operation Void Edge will not turn into an absolute frag fest. Again, and for the last time today, I would love to get your opinion on these changes. Why all the grenades all of a sudden? Do you have any theories about what these changes are supposed to achieve? Leave your comments in the comment section below and vote in the poll to let me know whether you like these changes or not. And with that, I think I've waffled on quite enough for one day. This patch is once again quite extensive, so join me in a couple of upcoming videos to go through the rest of the changes. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.